What's going on guys? Today we're gonna to go over five different common roof types. First we have the gable, then we have the hip, we have the gambrel, the mansard, and the flat roof. All right, so before we get into the roof framing, let's just quickly refresh on what's under the roof. So first we have the footings and then the foundation walls. And then on top of the foundation wall, we have the termite shield. And this stops termites from coming up to the wood structure. And here's a professional demonstration on how a termite shield works. Then we have the sill plate, which is fastened down to the foundation with the anchor bolts. Those are those metal pins that you see going around the whole foundation. Then we have the floor joists that sit on top of the sill plate. Then we have the subfloor. Then we have the sole plate and the wall studs. And then on top of the wall studs is the top plate. Then we have the ceiling joists that sit on top of the top plate. All right, so first let's look into the gable roof. So the gable is probably the simplest one we're gonna look at. It starts with two posts at the end walls, then a ridge is placed at the specified height, and then roof rafters are cut to perfectly fit from the top plate all the way to the ridge. Then the fascia board caps off all the ends of the rafters. And when you have a gable like this, you end up with two attic walls, and these need to be studded. And the distance from the top plate to the ridge will tell you how big of a roof rafter you actually need. Obviously, the longer the span, the bigger the roof rafter. And this is the same thing with ceiling joists as well. And then you can see how the ceiling joists are connected to the side of the rafters. Okay, so looking at a gable roof plan, you can see that there's a ridge running right down the middle. And the roof rafters run from left to right from the ridge. And all the water is pitching away from the ridge because the ridge is the highest point in the roof. The whole point of a roof in the first place is to shed all of the water off of the roof and not to have any spots where water can puddle and sit. So this little notch in the rafter is called the bird's mouth. And this is the part of the rafter that's going to come in contact with the top plate and also be fastened to the top plate. And the bird's mouth gives the rafter a bearing point to hit the top plate and then all of this weight is transferred down into the wall and then eventually into the footings. Alright, so now let's look at the hip roof. So this is a little bit more complex, but not really. So the posts, instead of starting at the ends, they start more in the middle. Then the ridge is placed. And then these hip beams from all four corners connect to the end of the ridge. And then we have all these rafters that fill in these four separate bays. And then the fascia board caps off all the ends of the rafters again. Okay, so looking at the hip roof plan, you can see there's a ridge running right down the middle but unlike the gable, it doesn't extend all the way to the exterior walls. These four hip beams then connect to the end of the ridge, and the roof rafters run away from the highest point in the roof, as well as the pitch. Okay, so again, looking at the section detail for a hip roof, it's very similar to a gable. The only difference is that when the ceiling joists are running the opposite way from the roof rafters, there's something called a strong back, which is attached from the ceiling joists to the rafter. And this happens in this situation here where the ceiling joists are running the opposite way from the roof rafters. This is just to secure the ceiling system to the roof system. This makes everything much stronger. Here you can see on this side that the ceiling joists can be easily connected to the rafters and there's no issue. Okay, so next up is the gambrel roof, commonly referred to as the barn style roof. So this roof is a little bit more complex than the last two. So there's a few different ways to structure a gambrel roof. You can actually have full trusses that don't even require these walls at all. Or you can have a beam that sort of sits in the middle of the two different roof pitches that I'm about to show you. Or you could do this. So this one starts with a sole plate that's inset on only two sides. The other two sides, it goes all the way to the end walls. So basically what we did up here was we built another box. It has the sole plate, the wall studs, and the top plate again. So here we have the two posts that sit at the end. And then we have the ridge. And the first set of roof rafters will connect from the ridge to the top plate on the second floor here. So an easy way to think about this is that there's a separate gable on top of this sort of box here. And here are the rafters that make up that second steeper pitch on the side. A gambrel really has two roof pitches. There's one at the top and then one on the sides. The one on top is fairly shallow and then the one on the sides is much more steeply pitched. And this gives that barn look. And just like the gable roof, we need attic wall studs here. 
So the Gambrel roof plan is much like the gable roof plan. The only difference is that it has those two uh, steeper pitches on the side. So we have the ridge that runs down the middle and this goes from wall to wall. And the roof rafters come away from that ridge and so does the pitch. And in this section we can see how this all comes together. Alright, so next up is the mansard roof. Alright, so the mansard roof is very much like the Gambrel roof. But instead of only offsetting two sides, we're actually going to offset all four sides and we're left with this interior box here. It has the sole plate, the wall studs, and the top plate again. And this ridge doesn't span from exterior wall to exterior wall, it actually sits in the middle. Then we have four total hip beams which come from the corners of this box and they go to the end of the ridge on each side. Then we have rafters that fill in these four bays. So remember how the gambrel had a gable on top? So an easy way to think of a mansard roof is that you're building a hip roof that's offset in from the exterior walls from the first floor. So the mansard has a secondary set of hip beams, and this comes from the corners of that box that we built on top, all the way down to the corners of the first floor. Then everything in between the hip beams are filled with rafters, and the fascia board is there to cap off all of the rafters. So the mansard roof plan is very similar to the hip roof plan. The only difference is that the mansard has these offsets off of every side. And that's that steeper pitch that comes off each end. So we have the ridge in the middle. It doesn't quite go to each exterior wall. And in a mansard roof, we have eight hip beams, not four. And then the roof rafters run from the highest point, and so does the pitch. The section detail for the mansard roof is very much like the Gambrel roof. But remember the strong backs in the hip roof that attach from the roof rafters to the ceiling joists? The same idea runs here because there's going to be a point where the rafters do not run the same way as the ceiling joists, and that's where the strong backs are implemented. Alright, so next up is the flat roof with a parapet. So in the case of the flat roof, these actually aren't ceiling joists, these are called roof rafters, because this is the actual roof. Then the base of the parapet is laid out, and something called sleepers are laid on top of the roof rafters. And what a sleeper is, is basically a wedge of wood it's kind of like that block of wood that you put in your door as a door stopper, to give you an image. Alright, so after that the parapet can be framed. A common pitch of a sleeper is a quarter inch per foot, and this provides just enough slope so that water can shed off. So there's actually no such thing as a completely flat roof, because water needs to come off the roof somehow. You can't have water just sitting on top of your house. Not a good idea. So usually the water pitches into a drain. So you can see here in this illustration that from left to right, there's the main pitch where the sleepers are going. But those two darker pieces pointing towards the drain as well, those are called crickets. And this makes sure that water doesn't pool up in the corner and sit there. So for the flat roof, there's a parapet going around the entire exterior. Then the sleepers are placed on top of the roof rafters and this gives the roof a pitch. Then we have the two crickets on the top and the bottom and these all pitch into that roof drain right in the middle to the right. And here's the section on how everything comes together. And understanding different roof types is really important because this distinguishes one style from another. You know, a shingle style house has a bunch of gables. You can have large sweeping gables. You can have very tall steep gables that go from the first floor to the third floor. Gables are commonly used in English Tudor design. Or you can have a massive gable that takes up 60 feet. Or you can have super pointy gables. Biltmore has a hip roof. You know, an Italian Renaissance style home has hip roofs. Proofs have different pitches when they're in different styles. And you'll notice that French design uses very steep hip roofs. Your hip roof can be very wide and spread out, or it could be very steep and tall. And then you realize, oh, the Gambrel roof was created because there needed to be more attic space or a bigger second story, and the gable couldn't provide that headroom. So the Gambrel provides that headroom. And then you see the mansard roof, and you think Second Empire or French design. The Palace of Versailles has a mansard roof. And then you have the flat roof that just says, screw it, I don't want to see anything. All right, so those are very simple examples, right? But once you start to understand how things go together, it can help you become a better designer and it'll actually help you realize why things are designed the way they are. And knowing how things go together, it gives you a certain amount of confidence when you're in the design process, really knowing that this is gonna work. So yeah, I hope that helped, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.